If you like this video, please press like and consider subscribing. Thank you. You heard it right. Before it becomes apparent, Tintin Rocket is out and more conventional spaceship similar in design to X-37 is in. Hi everyone, back from long holiday and boy what a return. SpaceX does not disappoint. New rocket design is in order. Starship will look somewhat different than the original design. The new design comes with a pair of small cannon wings on each side. The likely reason for this design is not aesthetics, but has practical design applications. As Starship re-enters Earth or Mars atmosphere, it will need to slow down and although Tintin design goes some way in creating drag, sadly it won't be sufficient to slow the Starship down without serious propulsive burn to slow down the Starship. This design also gives Starship greater stability and more control surfaces, something crucial when landing something that is 55 meters tall and weighs some 170 tons or more. The new pair of wings gives Starship really cool design, I must admit. But as a result of changes, the MK2 Starship will be delayed, something Elon Musk has mentioned in his recent tweets. As with the original design, Starship will be capable of lifting around 30 to 50 tons into low Earth orbit. However, for Earth to Earth flies, the Starship won't be capable of SSTO flies or single stage to orbit capability. Canard wings, however, could help Starship to utilize its design for Earth-to-Earth -Earth landings and flights, especially if Starship at no point exceeds 20 km altitude in Earth-to-Earth -Earth travel. Starship MK1 will be ready for the first test flight at the end of this month. To remind you all, Elon Musk plans to present the new Starship on the 28th if I'm not mistaken. So many of the workers who worked on the MK2 Starship in Florida were rushed to Texas to complete work on MK1 Starship at Boca Chica. This indeed indicates Starship MK1 will be ready for the 28th, but it will depend on FAA and FCA to give their blessing for any test flight this month. Fingers crossed it happens, but experience tells me it will be sometimes in early or mid-October before we see Starship MK1 roaring in our skies. We finally have more details about the Starship, although Elon Musk will, will reveal more on the 28th. At this point, this is very much speculation on our part, although based on what Elon Musk tweeted, but also on what we can see happening on the ground. As SpaceX is rushing to complete Starship MK1 with crew from Coca Florida, moved to Boca Chica to help complete project on schedule, we are finding some interesting new tidbits about Starship's new design and how it will land. Starship will utilize a form of thrust vectoring propulsion, previously used only in advanced military jets, such as F-22 or Su-35 derivatives. The technology allows aircraft, in this case Starship, ability to control every aspect of flight dynamics, from taking off, hovering, pitching and moving sideways to complete landing on an even surface. Thrust vectoring technology isn't as complicated as it sounds. Basically, each engine within Starship has ability to be tilted slightly to manipulate directional thrust and this way control Starship angular momentum, flight dynamics and so on. On this testbed, at first only three Raptor engines will be integrated into the Starship. A Starship won't be carrying substantial cargo. However, at the later stage, there's a good chance Starship MK1 was the integration of all six Raptor engines as stated by Elon Musk on several occasions. Starship will be capable of producing 600 metric tons of thrust. Three Raptors were attached to the custom fabricated thrust structure that was installed inside Starship MK1 on the August 14th, barely a month ago. Starship inaugural flight test, the first of which will involve suborbital launch to an altitude of around 20 kilometers, could happen in early October. Obvious changes to the new design are additional canard wings which will allow Starship to control fly dynamics as it takes off, lands and so on. However, changes to the cone of the Starship as a result of new design. SpaceX technicians were welding propellant feed lines to the outside of the Starship tank section and installing the rocket header tanks, small secondary propellant tanks, inside the cone. This will allow independent movement of additional surface controls through cone section of the Starship. Any notion that conventional Starship design we're all familiar with will be the final design might get massive surprise on the 28th. SpaceX clearly thought of the safety, but also a relatively thin atmosphere of Mars, which could make any landing very difficult. 
having additional capability when it comes to landing on both Moon and Mars could only help and show NASA SpaceX has developed a serious contender for future manned programs. Integration of 400 kilowatt hour of Tesla battery packs into Starship is needed as batteries are needed to power the electric motors that will actuate Starship's massive control surfaces. In other words, two large aft and forward canard wings. According to Musk, Starship stability is controlled by very rapid movement of rear and forward fins during entry and landing, meaning that the spacecraft will need to constantly tweak its control surfaces to remain in stable flight. By far the biggest challenge SpaceX faces is ensuring that Starship can survive numerous orbital velocity re-entries with little to no wear and tear, a necessity for Starship to be cost effective. In low Earth orbit, Starship will be traveling no less than 7.8 km a second, or Mach 23, at the start of, of atmospheric re-entry. In simple terms, the process of slowing from orbital velocity to landing on Earth involves turning the vast majority of that kinetic energy into heat. The fastest route to Earth will involve diving straight into the atmosphere dramatically increasing peak heating on the spacecraft surfaces to the point that extremely exotic heat shield, the thermal protection system, becomes an absolute necessity. SpaceX wants to find the middle ground with Starship in which the spacecraft uses its aerodynamic control surfaces and body to generate lift, slowly and carefully lowering itself into Earth's atmosphere over a period of 20 plus minutes dramatically lessening the peak heating at the cost of increasing the overall amount of energy Starship has dissipated. Similar principle NASA Space Shuttle used to land, difference being angles of re-entry and speed of re-entry, something SpaceX would like to control to a much greater degree. However, as Elon Musk will hold unveiling of Starship on the 28th, and as I'll live feed the event, we'll need to wait for the full details on Saturday. Till then, Thank you.